One of my favorite quotes, I think, is by Albert Einstein. And that is, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. I'm just going to go ahead and put my hair up for this one. So let's start with relative humidity because I want to make sure you understand that first. If this little container, this measuring cup, were the air, and this is how much water vapor it can hold, let's call this 50% relative humidity, right? Like it's holding half of the amount of water that it can. The problem is this is also 50% relative humidity. The difference between these two glasses is the temperature of the air. You see, different air temperatures can hold different amounts of water vapor. Um, and that is because at different temperatures, the air has different densities. So when the air is really cold, it's very dense and there's less room for water vapor molecules. So you reach 50% humidity much faster in colder air than you do warm air. Now water vapor is floating about in our atmosphere. We can have a little bit of it and it's very dry days. You can have a lot of it and it's very humid. To reach 100% humidity means that the water vapor in the air can no longer exist in a gas form and it has to start condensing out. And so it starts turning into a liquid. It starts turning into water drops. The dew point temperature in this instance would be what temperature is this whole volume of air before its water vapor reaches 100% and it has to start condensing out. So this air would be like, I don't know, let's call it like 45 degrees Fahrenheit, where once you reach 45 degrees and you reach 100% relative humidity here, that 45 degrees is the trigger for the water to start condensing out of it. That is the dew point temperature, the temper temperature at which that water vapor turns into dew, right? Into little mm -hmm. drops. This one, however, is more like 80 degrees and so it takes a heck of a lot more water for it to reach its dew point temperature for that water vapor to condense out of there and actually form a liquid. When you look up the definition of dew point they say it's the temperature that the air needs to be cooled to in order to reach 100% relative humidity. So if I were to take our 80 degree air at 50% relative humidity and cool it and cool it and cool it and cool it and cool it. Oh my God, I'm getting pretty full. Until it reaches 100% relative humidity. Maybe in this instance, that would be like 45 degrees. And I would know that the dew point temperature of that air was 45. That's the temperature it would have to get cooled down to in order for all those water vapor molecules to turn into solid water. So knowing what you know now, think about what you've experienced. We never feel humid days in the winter because it takes a lot less moisture in the air in order to reach that 100% humidity. Um, so it condenses out before we really feel it. But the amount of water vapor that you need in the air in order to reach 100% humidity on a hot and warm day is a lot more. And we can really feel all that additional water vapor that's in the atmosphere. That's what makes it feel so humid and sticky and gross. If on a day where it's say like 80 degrees outside and the dew point is only 70, that means you only have to cool that air down to 70 degrees in order for all that water vapor to condense out of it. There's a lot of water vapor in there, it's holding a lot. Or if on an 80 degree, the dew point temperature is like 45 instead, you have to cool it a lot more in order to condense that moisture out of there. I'll take your question one step further and tell you why this matters in meteorology and matters in forecasting. Um, a very interesting um, way to forecast low temperatures at night in some instances is to actually look at the dew point temperature that's measured because the air overnight will cool and cool and cool until it reaches that and then it actually puts energy into the condensation which releases heat or what have you. And so we use dew point temperature a lot to help forecast our overnight low temperature. This also really matters uh, in like severe storm forecasting because say we've got a bunch of clouds rising on a thunderstorm day and there's this like warm, humid air that goes up in the atmosphere and we know that when it rises in the atmosphere, it loses density and so it cools and then it reaches its dew point temperature. You're gonna have liquid water in there and the temperature with which that parcel of air is gonna cool as it continues to rise through the atmosphere is completely different when it's wet versus when it's dry. It's actually gonna stay warmer than the dry air around it, which causes it to rise faster, which causes more lift. This is CAPE, this is convective available potential energy, and this is a big driver of the amount of energy that we look at with regard to severe storms. Dry air, moist air, act very differently in a lot of ways, and it's something that as meteorologists we need to know because that can be the, a major difference in forecasts. And knowing that dew point temperature, knowing at what temperature that air has to be cooled to before this change happens, where it's going to behave differently, 
is very critical in forecasting.